We've already seen how thermodynamics can describe the favorableness of a chemical reaction. That exothermic reactions and those that involve increases in entropy both contribute to spontaneity in a balance described by Gibbs' law. The more negative a reaction's delta G, the more favorable it is. A reaction's favorableness is also described by its equilibrium constant. Large equilibrium constants correspond to highly favorable reactions. Since both delta G and K reflect how favorable a reaction is, you might expect there to be a mathematical relationship between the two. And there is. Delta G naught equals negative RT natural log of KEQ, where R is the gas constant and T is the temperature in Kelvin. As you might expect, a large value of KEQ corresponds with a large negative value of delta G naught. For the first time, I'm highlighting the little naught symbol on delta G. That symbol means standard state at one atmosphere of pressure with solutions all at one molar concentration and any liquids or solids being pure. Delta G naught actually represents the amount of energy that would be released if a reaction went entirely from reactants to products. It's a constant value for a given reaction at a given temperature. But at a given instant, the, a reaction is not likely to be at standard conditions. So delta G naught doesn't really reflect the driving force of a reaction at a given moment. Instead, delta G without the naught reflects the driving force of a reaction under a specific set of conditions. Let's use a graph to help us understand this. You've already seen reaction coordinate diagrams, which show the progress of a reaction as it goes from reactants to products, illustrating the Gibbs free energy on the y-axis. Delta G naught reflects the energy difference between pure products in their standard states and pure reactants in their standard states. It's basically the amount of energy that would be released or absorbed if a reaction went completely from reactants to products. But we know from our study of equilibria that most reactions don't go to 100% completion. That is, they establish some equilibrium balance between products and reactants, where there's some amount of everything present. That is, there's some intermediate place between pure reactants and pure products that's the actual most stable arrangement. And once the system reaches that point, moving either direction is non-spontaneous. Delta G without the naught represents the driving force of a reaction at a given moment, given a particular set of conditions. If you have a reaction that is spontaneous as written, then if you start with only reactants, it will proceed to the right. That is, given those conditions, the reaction will be spontaneous in the forward direction and will have negative delta G. If you start with pure products, the reaction will be spontaneous in the reverse direction and will have a positive delta G. And at equilibrium, no net reaction is happening in either direction, so delta G is zero. Graphically, delta G without the naught is the slope of this curve. So what's the relationship between this instantaneous delta G and the constant delta G naught? The mathematical relationship is this. Delta G equals delta G naught plus RT natural log of Q, where Q is the reaction quotient when you're not at equilibrium. If we substitute the equation from earlier, we can see that if Q equals KEQ and we're at equilibrium, then delta G equals zero. If Q is less than K, then delta G is negative, the reaction proceeds forward. And if Q is greater than K, 
then delta G is positive. The reaction proceeds 